scrimmages from their own eight yard line. Jones drills the ball. Oh, it is intercepted. Amu Kamari. And he is still on his feet at the 10. Inside the five. And down to the. What's up, everybody? We are back. It is the Play the Fight Song fan perspectives, and this is the Nebraska side. Nebraska travels to Madison, Wisconsin this week to take on the Badgers, who also sit at 5-5, five and five, as Nebraska does, looking for that bull berth in 2023 that Nebraska has so long thirst for. It's a good week to do so. I think it's a weird spot, and there's a lot of unknowns about this team. Um, if you haven't gone back and watched my recap of the Maryland game, it has some hot takes in there, and just to briefly share them with you, I'm glad Marcus Satterfield is still our offensive coordinator. I think we got to stop firing people, so... I'm excited for what Nebraska can do in this game. Um, we're going to dive into both sides of the ball for both teams just to kind of take a look at what you can expect and kind of some player names to watch for Wisconsin in this matchup. It's a 630 kick in Madison. It's going to be pretty cold. I heard it's going to be like low 40s, probably closer to 30 at kickoff. Point Nebraska, I guess. Taking a look at the two teams and kind of what they do on the field. Wisconsin got back Tanner Mordecai last week against Northwestern where they fell 24 to 10. And Wisconsin's been skidding as, as of late. I mean, it's a team that's tremendously underperformed this year. They were picked to win the Big Ten West to be a 9-10 team, and they're sitting at 5-5 five and five after Week 11 and kind of lost on where this team's going to go the rest of the year. I mean, they, they're they definitely not going to find themselves in Indy. Well, they could because the Big Ten West is so bad, but it's definitely not a team that any other year would be sitting in this spot saying that they're going to be playing for a Big Ten title, but it's a possibility. Tanner Mordecai, like I said, came back and played against Northwestern last week. Just taking a look at his stats, we'll start with Wisconsin's offense. Uh, 31 for 45 for 255 against Northwestern's defense. 45 passes. What Wisconsin is this? If you don't know, if you've been living under a rock, Wisconsin is led by head coach Luke Fickle from the University of Cincinnati in his first year. And then Nebraska is also with their first year coach and Matt Rule. So it'll be interesting to kind of see how this starts. These two tenure together. Uh, that it's a matchup that's been dominated by Wisconsin the last God, what is it now? Eleven years. We haven't beat them since 2012. So we're due. We we could use a, a little bit of life after the last couple of losses that we've taken. Nebraska rolling off of a loss against Michigan State and a loss against Maryland in the last second. A very Nebraska-like loss. One score. Throw a pick to set up the game-winning drive for Maryland, who kicks a 28-yard field goal to beat us. So we, we need to bounce back. This is a good spot to do so on the road. It's a better opportunity than I think we give ourselves credit for. I know if you're taking a look down on the ticker, Wisconsin is a three-and-a-half point favorite. That line opened at six-and-a-half. It's moved down a lot, and I think that has something to do with some of their injuries that they've talked that they've uh, gotten, and, and we'll talk on those. Um, but let's go back into their offense really quick. I know I'd already mentioned that Tanner Mordecai threw 45 passes last week, but that's an SMU transfer that really does a good job throwing the football. I mean, it's a guy that if I feel like we have him, we're a completely different team. And you could probably plug and play any of the Big Ten West quarterbacks in, in front of ours and kind of what they've given us this far. No saying that we don't have a great performance this week, but and we probably win a couple more games than we already have. So Mordecai's a good, good thrower. He's consistent. He, if the throws are open, he's going to make them. He's not going to be a guy that blows you away scramble wise, but he will if he has to. I mean, it's a good quarterback. It's he put up absolute numbers at SMU, uh, and it was a good find for Fickle and the Badgers. So it's a guy that makes me nervous a little bit when it comes to the nickel and diming team thing that teams like to do against Nebraska. That find success. Maryland did it early last week and found success, and then they kind of go away from it when we settle in. But early in the game, teams do have success nickel and diming the black shirts. So we'll see what they come out with. I, I assume that that's will be kind of the initial move for them. And on the outside, I think guys that you should watch out for uh, leading receiver from last week, Will Pauling, and then Benny Anthony, the second they're not, they don't have a ton of receivers that jump off the page, but it's Wisconsin. You wouldn't expect that, right? You would expect me to come and tell you, Hey, they're going to give Braylon Allen the ball 30 times, run it downhill, control the clock. This is going to be one of those slow, boring games and hopefully nothing like the Melvin Gordon game from 14. But it's not going to be that. This is a way different Wisconsin team than you're used to seeing, and I think even their fans are used to seeing, which I'm sure they're a little upset considering how the year has gone with the change that they've made. But Braylon Allen 
it, it might not play. He's limited. It's obviously the biggest name on their injury list, and he only carried the ball three times last week for three yards, and his longest carry was two yards. So it, it's not a guy that is going to get a heavy w- workload even if he sees the field, but he might not see it at all, which is a plus for Nebraska's defense. But they really defended the run enough to – not even worry about if he were to play. I wouldn't be sweating if Braylon Allen was in the game, but he is an elite back that it is fortunate for him to be out for, for the Nebraska side of things. So uh, the, the running back I think you'll see a lot is Cade. I'm going to go for it. Yacamele. Yacamele, leading carrier last week, nine carries, 47 yards, average 5.2 yards a carry, and his longest was 13 yards. And then their second leading carrier is Mordecai. I know he, I said he's not a scramble guy, but he does when he has to. And this offensive line for Wisconsin is pretty good, um, but their fault is their pass blocking. And I know you've heard that story before because ours is the same. Um, but Mordecai had eight carries last week for 25 yards, 3.1 yards per average. It's not a scary offense by any means. I mean, if you hadn't caught what I said, they got beat by Northwestern at home last week, 24 to 10. Madison wasn't rocking. This isn't going to be the 7-8 matchup that we saw back in 2015 where Nebraska was rolling, Wisconsin was rolling, and we got to roll into a hot house in Madison where jump around is going to be shaking the entire state. This is going to be way different. I mean, apparently I heard from the grapevine, I'm not a hunter guy myself, but it's the first day of deer hunting season or something like that. So they don't think it's going to be a lot. Tickets are 8 bucks. I I don't know what to tell you guys. It's not going to be a good atmosphere for a night game, especially. It's kind of shocking. It'll be way different too in this Wisconsin Nebraska matchup for the Freedom Trophy. But we'll I'll take we'll take it if you want to take Wisconsin's home field advantage away from them. I'm never going to complain. So let's look to the offensive side of the ball. Things the offensive side of things for Nebraska. Um, Nebraska. How many times we got to have this conversation? Right? They're not going to. We're not going to blow anybody away. Uh, Heinrich's limited in practice this week. We don't know if he's going to be able to go. His snaps will be limited even if he does. I think that Sims will be your starter um, with Purdy having being a little bit banged up. I think that's just from not playing for a while. But I think Sims will be your starter, and it comes down to one thing. And I think we can all agree on this, and everybody knows what I'm about to say. Can we limit our turnovers? I don't want to say can we go a game without any turnovers because that's just not what this team is. We've turned over the balls 27 times in 10 games, and a majority of them have come off of Jeff Sims, and that's most likely who's going to be your starting quarterback. So we just need to limit it to one, maybe two, for the entire game, which seems like a tall task for this Nebraska team. It's not really a team that is capable of not turning the ball over, it seems, and and it's unfortunate as a fan, but even as just a football guy who enjoys the, the purity of the game, it's the ugliest football ever. But That's not to say that the whole Big Ten hasn't been that way the entire year. So Nebraska has an opportunity here on offense, maybe to put a few things together. Watching the Northwestern game from last week, Northwestern found some set success running the ball downhill. And I've said that the last couple of weeks as well. And Nebraska has been good at that. I thought Emmett, who got the most carries he's gotten in his career so far last week, 17 carries for 83 yards. I thought it was good. I think we can give him the ball 25 times. I don't want to go more than that because you don't want to obviously risk an injury or over carry the guy and cut him start causing him to fumble the football. But it's it's more than plausible to say that Emmett Johnson can get 25 carries and Nebraska can run themselves into a victory here. Um, but they just got to hold on to the football. That's priority number one on the offensive side of the ball. Number two, I think we can do a little bit of nickel and diming on our our own. When Ben Bryant had success last week with Northwestern. He was, he was throwing to Bryce Kurtz on little six-yard curl, little flat routes, little crossing routes, things like that. It wasn't a ton of throwing the ball down the field. They set up some blown coverage plays, which Wisconsin secondary has some holes in it. They have some young guys. So Nebraska can also benefit from that on the offensive side of the ball. And I think that that will be a big factor in whether or not Nebraska can put their points up, which they just haven't been doing. So that's something to look out for, for sure. When it comes to Wisconsin defensively, the kind of guys that I think you'll hear a lot throughout the day, um, will come from the defensive side of the ball. Uh, it seems to be a just a common thing for this Nebraska team is for teams to put up good defensive stats against us, and I think that has everything to do with us turning the ball over. So um, defensively for the Badgers, I'd say two names to look out for. One, you got Hunter, Hunter Wohler on the 
defensive back side of things. He's a safety for them. He had 10 tackles last week. Nine of them were solo. So it's a guy that I assume will be covering up a lot of the deep routes. He'll be the the last line of defense for this Wisconsin team. And, and Northwestern broke off some big runs last week. I think we saw it firsthand when Northwestern rolled into Lincoln that they didn't have a lot of guys that were speed backs, right? Um, they had the couple of long plays where we hawked guys down and held them to three, and Wisconsin did a little bit of the same. They gave up some long runs, but it was, Northwestern's so slow in the backfield that they can't bust those. I think Emmett's different. I think Emmett can have success and get past that last line of defense, but Nebraska sets them up for failure when it comes to the run game because we are so bad at turning the ball over that we force a lot of defenses to um, – drop back not drop back but blitz we we force a lot of defensive hands into blitzing and and we do not find success when they do so so it'll be a lot on the weight of jeff sims and chubba purdy to not turn the ball over when they do blitz because i i have a feeling it's going to be a lot so take a look for that uh, uh from the wisconsin side of things on the defensive side of the ball i just expect a lot of blitzes and a loaded box often but if it's not a loaded box Northwestern got a push, man. Our offensive line can have another great week. I thought they played their best game of the week last week, too. I agreed with Rule on that. Um, but I think we can have another big week here. Their defensive front isn't anything that scares me. And we got to run the football effectively to win. At the end of the day, that's what this team has to do. We don't have enough consistent throwing. And consistency includes not throwing it to the other team. We don't have enough of that to sit here and say we can just hand the ball off 55 times and not have a better chance than if we drop back 30 times. So. That's what I look at for Nebraska's offense. On the defensive side of the ball, I think Nebraska is going to be Nebraska this week. I, I don't think they had a down week last week. I wasn't upset that they gave up a field goal late in the game. I was more upset that, that we put them in the position to give up a field goal late in the game. This Nebraska defense is elite. They'll continue to be that way. Uh, Braylon Allen being out, like I already talked about, is a huge piece for us to be successful. It's another week where we can shut the run down, force Mordecai's hand, and possibly force some more turnovers. We just have to cover the sidelines well. Wisconsin's a team, after watching them back, that they like to throw the ball to the sideline. Mordecai's a consistent enough thrower to make those throws. So limiting that, and, and we've had a couple of secondary players that have had down weeks. I thought Tommy Hill was about as bad as he's been the last couple of weeks. And then Omar Brown had a bad week last week, and Mal Malcolm Hartsog had to step up and make some plays through an injury, and he got burned a couple of times. So our secondary just needs to take that next step back to kind of what they were. I'm not sure if Quinn's going to return. I hope he does. I assume he would. Uh, I believe he's in some type of protocol, but uh, hopefully we get Quentin back because that is a late first round, early second round pick in the NFL if you're if you're smart. Uh, but I think Quentin will play a big role here in, the, in kind of putting that secondary back up to the next level with the experience that he brings to the table. On the defensive line side of things, probably the best game I've seen Ty Robinson play at Nebraska was last week. So hopefully he can build off that along with Nash Hunemaker. Hopefully he can withstand the weight and not get too gassed when it comes down to stopping the downhill run game with some young guys in Wisconsin. And then we got to create pressure again. It's I've said this last week, but it's, it's imperative for this Nebraska defense to create pressure, especially with a probably the, I don't want to say the worst, but the most non movable quarterback in the pocket that we faced in a few weeks. I mean, I didn't think Michigan state was great when it came to the scramble game, but Taulia was as good as they come when it comes to getting out of the pocket. Hudson card was really good as well. Mordecai is not that he will scramble if he has to, but he's not going to bust moves and break runs for a long game. So creating pressure, making him make bad decisions will be as important as it ever was for Nebraska's defense yet again. So a lot of this is going to fall in Nebraska's defense getting stops. It's another bad offense that they get to do so against. And it just comes down to whether or not we can not turn the ball over, have those long extended drives, 14, 15 plays and punch it in for six. Settling for three. This is probably the only time I'll say this and next week uh, that Nebraska can settle for three and still win this football game. But I like six. So I think if we have those long gated drives and we get six, we should have no problem in this game. Madison's not going to be a factor. Night game's not going to be a factor. Our guys, our play style, it's going to fit well. But it's interesting. We can sit here and talk about all of this like we do every week. But what Nebraska team are we going to get? Are we going to get the flat one that rolled out at Michigan State? Are we going to get the turnover bug one that rolled out against Maryland? 
are we going to get the, I don't even want to say offensive identity. We don't even really have one. I mean, we just, it's just, it's, it's such a toss up, but I think that goes across the league, not just Nebraska. I mean, it's such a week to week league this year in my, in my opinion. I mean, you have four or five teams in the big 10 West sitting at three and four in the conference and five and five overall. What is this? Right. So we don't know what's going to happen. I think if I'd say, Hey, give me a score prediction, drop it down below. And you go, I don't really know. I would believe you. I think that that's not crazy. So big week for Nebraska. They got to get a win here to get bowl eligible. They got to get a win here for my sanity, for the fan sanity. It's emotionally taxing being as high as we were at five and three. Like the fact that I'm saying that as a Nebraska fan, like feeling as high as we did sitting at five and three to now saying, oh my God, we have two games left to get a bowl win, to get, to get into a bowl game. Come on. It's just another emotional tax you got to pay to be a Husker fan. So I think we have a good week this week. I I got Nebraska 17 13. It's the closest prediction I've made in my time doing these. And hopefully you enjoy them. If you do, give it a thumbs up, please, just so I know that there's people out there. We do all right in the views, but I'd love for you to hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up button, drop a comment and say, hey, idiot, moron, stop making these. And then I kind of know. Uh, but I enjoy sharing my thoughts. Hopefully I can get some more people to interact with these videos. And we'll go from there. But I think Nebraska gets the win 17 13 this week on NBC against the Badgers for the first time since 2012. And boy, that would be good. That's a monkey to get off your back alone. And this is a good team to do it against. I got rule over fickle this week and the big red rolls to another to a bowl game. That That is the prediction. I know I said that the last two weeks, but this is it. We got to be a, a little bit positive when everything seems to be going wrong for this team. So we'll, t- we'll catch up after the game. Check out our week 12 preview dropping tomorrow morning. It's a good one. It's in, there's another good week in college football with a lot of good games across the board. Check out the Play the Fight song on all social medias, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Give them a follow. On TikTok, it's at Play the Fight song. Everything, everywhere else, it's at Play the Fight pod. Since you're on the YouTube right now, just hit the subscribe button. You don't got to ring the bell or anything like that. Just hit the subscribe button. This lets us know you're out there. Catch up with all of our mid three stuff and some recaps, which are also going to be on this channel tomorrow. So give it a check and uh, hopefully enjoy it. I love college football. I love the state of Nebraska. I love you. Go Big Red.